Excuse me. I, I believe oh, that uh, Carson, I'm sorry. we received a request um, from the state board and the regional boards to change several of the dates that they had originally submitted to us. Um, staff reviewed those, and this one it seemed that they really are on track to meet the 1-1 2014 deadline, and so that one seemed reasonable to change. We did not recommend the other changes. Okay. Ms. Gray? Mr. Zlotnick, is, is this? Not, not exactly sure the, the conversation. The issue here for us was we understand that the agency that is charged to do this would say we can't do it. Um, the issue here is, is that um, you're going to have your, and maybe I don't know if the timing works or not, but your ISB and your science program are developing a plan to deal with science issues in the, in the system and just want to make sure that this change would be consistent with the as-yet-to-be-developed plan. Uh, and, again, maybe the timing doesn't work. But just because the agency says they can't do it based on current staffing, current priorities, doesn't necessarily mean that would be consistent with what your own science plan may come up with. Um, you might decide this is a higher priority and, you know, get, get on it. So I'm not sure if the timing works uh, because it's still it's relatively close. But the issue here was really more not just deferring to the agency before you have your own plan set up and identifying what the priorities really are uh, for the technical work. That was basically the issue here. So something to think about. This was the uh, – was this – I'm trying to remember. Was this the nutrient yeah, study? Yeah, the nutrient yeah. study. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's right. A, that's right. Mainly because, I mean, there's a lot of work that's been going on and, has, and is going on now. And so um, it, it was a combination of that and, as I said, uh, not just simply deferring to the agency, but, you know, having okay. some input from your um, science program. Uh, Dr. Goodwin, you're innocently sitting there. Do you have any independent knowledge of the water board or regional board's ability to keep the deadline by two, 2013? Do you have any think further on that, Joe? I don't have anything other than the yes, staff has contacted and talked with the well, let, state Can board. I make a suggestion? Uh, having heard that, let's let the staff go ahead with this, but check again on the date. Uh, check with Dr. Goodwin. I, I'm also in favor of trying to push agencies wherever it's appropriate to push them, but uh, the water board is being pushed by everyone in all directions simultaneously. So uh, I'm I, th I think, Joe, that you're going to wind up using your own discretion on what stays in or out, but taking a look at it would okay. be a good idea. Any objection to that, members? Any objection without objection? Uh, the next is item 278. It's the language on disadvantaged communities. Both Mr. Natoli and Ms. Marcus had uh, raised a question on that. Uh, let's get uh, Felicia's comment first, Martha. Again, this is a, another item which she had a question had a at the question, time, but, but she's fine. Don, you had uh, looked at yeah, this. Yeah, I did. And, and I, uh, one is, is that there had been a list of um, re for revised language of adding communities. I wanted to uh, make sure that, that the uh, community of Freeport got added since we made attempts to try to bring water and sewer to that community and found it a very daunting task from a fi financial standpoint. Not until you put the Liberty Trees back. And we, uh, we're working on that, okay. too, yeah. But <laughs> the um, one other thought that occurred to me as I was uh, reviewing this again, though, is that responsible agencies – um, Department of Public Health, and it was mentioned in Water Quality Control Board and Department of Water Resources. I would just tell you that from the standpoint of the, like the community of Locke, where we had to uh, bring sewer to that community and worked uh, with a number of entities, public health was involved, but we needed to work with U.S. Department of Agriculture in order to secure some funding. So I would just say USDA, particularly in rural communities where we're looking at trying to uh, maintain the viability of the uh, uh, the legacy communities and what they provide functionally as well as communities, um, um, you know, activities <clears throat> and services. And so I don't know whether it would be appropriate there, but USDA has been a strong partner um, when they have funding available and they have certain criteria. But they do, again, I think going along with what we reflect in the plan, um, uh, you know, bring that, uh, you know, local help to a rural community. And so I would just suggest that they're, they be included as a partner. And I guess this is for future evaluation. I would just tell you that right now, I can tell you communities that, in Sacramento County that we continue to look at the issues, and we're investing heavily uh, in the town of Hood, for example, on upgrading the water system there at no small amount and have actually brought meters in. And uh, um, so it's one of those things from a local standpoint. But you, I, I want to also recognize the local entities 
looks like various agencies recognize the local entities' role in this as well. So whether it's in you know any one of the five counties and or multiple cities within the uh, within the legal delta. So, so with the addition of the word Freeport, if it's a, if it's added, yes. this section would be uh, these changes would be okay with you. Freeport, and, and also I would add, suggest we add USDA to the list of agencies, and maybe also have local agencies mentioned as well. So okay, uh, Mr. Grindstaff. It's fine. Yeah. Fine. Any questions by members of the council? Anyone in the audience like to talk on this suggestion? All right. As uh, as outlined by Supervisor Natoli, including Freeport and USGS. No, no USDA. 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 Okay. <laughs> Geological Survey can come along for a ride if they want to, but it was, we like the farm and agriculture. <laughs> come along for a ride. Okay. <laughs> okay. Without objection, uh, staff will work with uh, uh, Don on that language. Okay, next page, members. Next page, please. Uh, in Chapter 7 now, uh, risk reduction, uh, Mr. Natoli, you had raised a question on Item 288. Very briefly, and I think Joe said he could address it. It was just what was unattributable. It was a, uh, unattributable, unattributed levies, and Joe said that's a term that's now used, I guess. I, in, in it state. is a term, and our plan will be to have – we had a map, I think, in an earlier draft that actually showed which were unattributed, which were non-project, and which were project levies. So we just want to make sure we have a definition in the glossary about it in a map so that well, people can actually see Let me make – I was surprised, too, although I should have caught it on both the map and that – 2011 letter that came in from DWR and in the middle of it was this unattributed levy, which is a term I had never heard of before and it carries no meaning to me whatsoever. The title unattributed levy, just done, I, I have no idea what that means. I then was reading back over the draft Delta plan. There are so many references to project, non-project levies, or other similar characterizations. I'll bet you they're mentioned 75 times in the narrative of the Delta Plan, and I don't think we can easily pop in unattributed levies as a term and expect to scatter it out throughout the Delta Plan without some clear understanding. I certainly I don't feel comfortable. I still don't know what they are. I, they're, they're, they're levies outside state responsibility, but inside urban areas that the, that the communities themselves or really ought to worry about. things like the cross levies that are built within uh, an island or in, in Susun Marsh levies that are built by the, the local duck club to help manage their, their, their water operations. So, yeah. Sporting levies? <laughs> but I had the same question as the chair. I just didn't know what it meant, so I was asking for definition, but I, I, I think there's a way to... I agree. We, yeah. we can yeah. make improvements so yeah. it's actually... Yeah, I, I take a look at that. In. Okay. And when, by the way, when we get to our investment strategies, let's maybe start with the question of how we categorize levies, not for investment purposes, but how we understand them, because I don't understand this new category. Okay, so uh, you're going to be working on the language with DWR and other mm -hmm. affected parties on that. Anyone in the audience like to talk about this? Okay, without objection, that's item 288. Item 304, members, uh, this is a issue Ms. Marcus had pulled off uh, the agenda. Same issue. She, was just, she had a question. She's fine with the uh, suggested change. Okay, and Joe, you're still recommending the language that staff had identified in the final draft plan, right? As a, as a consent calendar item to us, right? Yes. Okay. All right. That's the last one of those. Now, members, let me just clarify this. Uh, I think we can, uh, since Mr. Siegel isn't here to ratify what I'm about to do, let's let's go back. We've taken action on all of these items, but let's go back and get a vote on items pulled from consent calendar. Uh, uh, incorporating the actions taken on the specific items at hand and approving them as a whole. Mr. Johnston moves. Is there a second? Ms. Gray? Second. Okay, Mr. Johnston? Aye. Fiorini, aye. Eisenberg, aye. Totally aye. Okay, that's 5 0 on the, on the package of items. What's left? Oh, no, there is something left. Uh, I just want to, uh, Mr. Siegel, we've just gone through and done a blanket adoption of all the changes we made on the specific consent items. We did it. We gave a 5-0 approval to collectively all of those individual actions. That works. So you're going to figure out what it is that words <laughs> that describes that. Um, 
But we do go back. We've take, I, I just want to ratify this. We have already taken a vote on the staff proposed motion for the council meeting, which allows the process to go ahead. We have added the, uh, the suggestions of Supervisor Natoli and Ms. Gray as a now subsection B of number two of that motion, and that's to bring the, uh, the uh, finished uh, version of the Delta plan back to the council. We have a possible date, I think you said September, but, I'm, but you looked at me like that was not a blood guarantee. <laughs> it was instead Our best a po your prayer. best guess. Okay. <laughs> now, that's my understanding. Now, we have taken a vote on that. I would like to verify uh, with the council members' approval that the actions we have taken collectively on the items that were taken up after this shall be included in this motion. Is there any objection to that? No. Okay, without objection, all five of us agree to yes. that. Now, what else do you need in addition to this, uh, Mr. Grindstaff? Well, Mr. the one Siegel, thing Mr. I'd Ray? like to do is uh, verify on the schedule. Right now, my intent would be to recommend we not have a meeting at the end of this month, but that we staff have the opportunity to use uh, that time to prepare the final draft. <laughs> and uh, then... Uh, <laughs> Under the law, we are required to have at least one meeting a month, so we will need to have a meeting in August. I'm not sure that we will have, in fact, I don't believe we will have the Delta plan based on what uh, Dan is saying, prepared for that meeting. So we will plan on a meeting in August um, and uh, then probably another meeting in early September. I don't have dates yet. Angela is our miracle worker there who helps get these things all set up. She'll have to figure out how we get that right. done. But I just wanted to make sure that that was acceptable for you. Um, uh, yeah. Plan on that. Other thing we should probably report to you, although it's, I think it's already, you've gotten copies of it already, the, um, the uh, recruitment announcement for the new executive director was posted on our website. The deadline for applications is July 27th. Angela has done a bang-up job trying to bring everybody together and our, our media team and so on to write the material. Uh, I think there have been some responses and interests already. Uh, we don't know what the size of the response will be. But, Angela, it wouldn't, it wouldn't hurt for you to – oh, and we have copies back there for anyone in the audience or members who are interested in the uh, brochure. It wouldn't be a bad idea for you to post that memo that you sent to Randy and me outlining – the, the various websites and job search firms where had it, it had been posted, uh, is that what they're, whatever they're called, uh, because I thought it was a pretty good list. And, uh, and actually that may be an item that we discuss at the meeting on, at the end of August because the closing date is July 27th, I yeah, believe, right. and I expect the subcommittee or the committee will meet and, and discuss the applicants and maybe have a narrowed list, so that may actually be... Uh, a major item of business for the council at that meeting at the end of August. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Uh, now, is there anyone in the audience who wants to talk about things that haven't yet occurred or been discussed? Somebody scratching his head. That was just a scratching of your head, not a request to speak. Okay. This is, if this were an auction, you would have purchased <laughs> my name. <laughs> <laughs> So yeah. one time I, I was at an auction. I was auctioning, and Mr. Zuckerman had done something. He, fun, you know, looked in his coat, gotten a pencil out, and do something. And I, I tried to sell him, and he just said no. I announced he'd bought it, and he said no. Okay. Anyway, uh, ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much. It is a uh, uh, appreciate, very appreciative that you would all stick through this long process, and uh, we have a ways to go, but uh, we're moving ahead, and members and staff, uh, thank you very much for doing a yo person's job. Is that, is that a word, yo person? A yo person's job. Oh, the last thing is, Ms. Pearson's just won a fabulous competitive award, which I have been told not to mention, and I won't. Okay, meeting <laughs> is adjourned. <laughs> and he was guessing. Uh,